In the back, like, so we go to Hero Comics, talking about his uh, game collection. This Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles for GameCube. I have a GameCube, so I can totally play this game if I wanted to. You know, I might, I think I will do redo, I might just redo the ending. Mm. Okay, because that's the issue. The uh, beginning was like, now there was a lot of problems. There was a lot of issues. I might, I don't know what I'm going to, I might do redo the ending. Because the beginning, uh, the, for at first I was using a camera like this one, I think, to do parts. And then stuff happened where it was like, uh, I ran out of space or battery power or, or the SD card, was a lost SD card or whatever. And so I decided to use my web, my eye toy, which is over there. See that eye toy? Yeah, I gotta work on that too. But anyway, oh my god, I missed some tacos. Anyway, uh, my eye toy. But the problem is, of course, it's not as good quality or, or something as this was. And basically, the, the screen, the last battle took place in a place that was mostly white, uh, white and shi shiny and bright and whatever. So it's flipping all over the place, and it was annoying. I might just do it over again, do the bad that last battle over again, because to get it, because this game was fun. One of the first ever co-op, four-player co-op games I've ever seen. Uh, I've ever seen, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo probably had, Nintendo and Super Nintendo probably had, did have four-player co-op, I think, right? All right? But this is one, well, this one here is one of the ones that was like, you know, next gen, next gen, you know, for a while. And in my opinion, one of the best games, best looking games on the GameCube, as well as four-player co-op, I like me some four-player co-op. And of course, as, as you all know, I enjoy me some four-player, some co-op. I say four-player co-op because there's a lot you can do with that. You can, you know has a lot of play value you can have other people play with you and stuff and that's one of the reasons why i like to connect so much <laughs> because you can have more than one player hang out with you that's what me and my mom did we were on we you know, played connect adventures and you know we both were able to you know be recognized by the connect very well with connect adventures because the software was good and we were able to and the controls are good so we were able to actually put that fishing that game with the fishing with the uh Aquarium in there, and we were able to just go, like, okay, you know, hold your hand here to stop the leak somehow. You know, I don't know how that works. Maybe we have the force, you know, maybe that, that our characters had the force, you know, <laughs> could actually do that, could actually mend it, you know. <laughs> I don't know, it's gonna be interesting, but anyway, Final Fantasy Chronicles, pretty awesome game, you know, with I call it basically different hobbits and, and the Gungan, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you have or a dwarf that could be a dwarf, that kid could be a little thing could be a dwarf, so that'd be like the ranger hobbit, uh, the regular, you know. The regular Hobbit, the Ranger Hobbit, a Dwarf, Hobbit, and a Gungan. So it was pretty pretty cool to see, pretty fun. I really did like that one. It was one of my favorite games on the GameCube. And look, well, might you play the Indie again. It would be really cool to see. Now, next, next. Let's get on with the next game. What is the next game? Oh, this is not a game. This is Carmen Riot, Riot's the Reason the Truth. Looking all cool. Yeah, there was a lot of cool songs for this one. I gotta check that out tonight. Let's continue. Lost Planet Extreme Condition. Lost Planet Extreme Condition, not my favorite game ever, especially from Capcom, who needs to be making more Breath of Fires, if you ask me. <laughs> okay, to make up for Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, the worst Breath, one of the, you know, the worst Breath of Fire game ever made, as well as one of the worst games I've ever played. <laughs> well, not really. Mm, I played worse, and I played worse. Uh, I have played worse, don't get me wrong. Uh, <laughs> Where's that? Where's that one? Oh yeah. Ahem. <coughs> yes. But still, this game here is okay. But it's okay and it's kind of fun. You know, it's kind of interesting. I look forward to playing it sometime. It's gonna be, yeah, you know, playing it sometime. You know, eventually. But you know, it's definitely not my favorite. It, you can do some cool stuff in here, but it definitely has a little bit of a learning curve because I was my guy was dying all over the place and it was weird because it was like, oh, okay. You know, get into the, you know, get enough, you have to get enough energy you know, for, like, killing things. First of all, you have to kill things. You, know, you basically have to run away from these bugs because they'll kill you really quick. There's ones you have to kill to get energy, right? So I was thinking, okay, I'll just get energy. There you go, no big deal. But then it's like, okay. Then it came the mech suits. And unfortunately, the mech suits run on the energy you get from the bugs and are you go rapidly depleting, you know, while you run around, not killing anything. So basically what happened was uh, he got in the mech suit, uh, he got, I killed some, I didn't kill enough bugs, right? Got in that mech suit, and I guess that makes it run out faster than you normally would run out. So basically what happened was, the guy got in that thing, ran a few, ran a little bit inside the mech suit, then fell out and died. <laughs> so I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> you know? So it definitely is a, it might be an interesting playthrough. I definitely want to play the story, so I can see what's going on in there. Because it kind of does remind me a little bit of Death Space. Mm -mm. Three, well, Death Space 3 used, probably used some... Took some uh, homages from this, you know, being in an icy environment, which I'm definitely, I am definitely playing Dead Space Three. I, I'll cut, out, I'll, 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 censor, I'll cut out some parts or whatever, but I want to play that game because of its weapon crafting and the interesting story. So there you go. Mm. Now, 
the cool things that you can do in it. So uh, LC, Lost Land, and Space 3 eventually. Now, let's get here and write it. That's Kitty the Shark. I can do I can. I can. Mm -mm, let's go. Mm. This is another Lego game. One that I definitely should play as, you know, get to, you know, I gotta play as soon as possible. Ugh. That is Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Yes, I'm sorry that I haven't gotten in. I haven't, sorry that I haven't been able to do any Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga because guess, because of the whole Xbox thing. The Xbox being, uh, someone doing something stupid calling the Xbox just to disappear, uh, to be gone was like the worst, one of the most annoying things ever. And because of that, I couldn't, like, I can't play anymore. I couldn't play this anymore. You know, and, and, well, like, I, in truth, hadn't really played it that much. So, but I will play it definitely when I get a new Xbox. I'll play it when I get a new Xbox. And it'll be awesome and fun. I know it will be. And family friendly. That'll be nice, because I try to do stuff that's family friendly. So that's good. That'll help out. What you got? Let's get this argument. And of course, RBG Maker. RBG Maker 1 for the PlayStation. One, I will definitely show off some stuff I can do with that. I might even make a uh, some so, some games. Actually, I might just I even like show it off what I can do with it by making games uh, that are like you know say Star Wars until the end. What should happen in Star Wars until the end of time? I might call it Star Wars in time. How it should end it or whatever. I might just do that. I might just do some stuff with that. Of course, I'm still gonna draw it out because I wanted to. But anyway, still. So I should, yeah, Arjun Maker can do some cool stuff, even though it's old school. I can still do some stuff with it. And, you know, there was just, you know, there was an awesome and interesting, turbulent tale, fun tale about how I got it, you know, walking back home, miles to, to home so I could have it and use it. It was great. I wasn't disappointed at all. It was fun. Well, kind of disappointed, but, you know, I quickly got over it because it was still awesome. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, sort of disappointed because it was like, okay, you don't see your character. You see when you battle, you see uh, your character stats. <laughs> You know, a little, you know, a little square with your character stats in it, and it, that square, you know, jumps up when it's your turn to attack. When, you're, when it, your character attacks, your character jumps up. You know, that's, that moves up. The square moves up, and like, you know, or it stays up, and it's like, uh, you know, or whatever. But, you know, you can, however, make it so, have cut scenes where it's like you, you see your character uh, doing stuff, throw stuff out or whatever. It's pretty cool. I got to show that to you sometime. That's going to be great. You want to see it. And then Final Fantasy VIII. Now, the issue with Final Fantasy VIII, that game was pretty interesting. Excuse me for a second while I eat this taco. <clears throat> it's big. It's beckoning to me. Oh. 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 Thank you, God. Oh. Oh. <sighs> The problem with games like this, this game was really actually kind of interesting. The problem was it came right after Final Fantasy VII, which was awesome and amazing and wonderful and got a lot of people, in the, in, you know, brought Final Fantasy into the mainstream, did a lot of cool stuff and introduced a lot of cool characters like Cloud and uh, Tifa and, well, kind of buried, but uh, and a bunch of other characters like that. Yuffie, Kate Sith, uh, what's the name? Yuna, well, no, not Yuna, she, she's later. Uh, Eris. Yes, Eris, Eris. I introduced Eris and a bunch of other people like that. It was great. It was wonderful. It was awesome. And I, I definitely would love to show you that game. I would love to show you that game. Uh, you know, there is someone getting stabbed in it. Mm. Stabbed through with a very long sword in that game. Dang you, Sephiroth. off. Anyway. Mm -mm. This game came after that, and people were like, uh, "Yeah, <laughs> you know, I played this for a little while, and I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, went back to my other, went to some other game. But basically, yeah, it came right after this. So basically, it's, it's unfortunately the forgotten, the the, pro, the forgotten child of you know Final Fantasy for a little bit for that reason, because it's different characters, still pretty cool, and interesting, but different. So it's not, you know, it was definitely, you know, took time to get grain steam, I guess. Mm. You know, now of course. I would love to play this game. Well, of course, I kind of messed things up with the skip doctoring this stuff out of this. Probably the cool thing is it's PlayStation One game, so it probably costs a good ten, fifteen dollars, maybe less. We'll see. I will definitely play this game someday for you guys because it'd be so cool to see this, see how this thing works. I don't even know how you know the story. This seems kind of interesting, and there was a cool CG scene that was fantastic for the time, especially on PlayStation One. It was like, wow, they can make graphics on PlayStation One like this. This is amazing, you know. And now, you know, so it definitely does look like it was a very kind of interesting game to be. I'll gladly play that. I'll gladly play Final Fantasy VII. And I'll gladly um, both, you know, 
saying they're both interesting. So that's a, let's go. That's Incredibles. Let's continue. That's Power Rangers SPD. Let's continue. That's some what? KJ52. Okay. Mm, got that one. Oh! Ooh, Call of Duty Black Ops. Another game that, they, that my roommates didn't want. Mm, so they gave it to me. Call of Duty Black Ops. I don't know if I'm going to play this one. Mm. Because I play Call of Duty Black Ops 2. That looks great. And there was a lot of fun stuff you could do in there. Unfortunately, there were some, even with the censors on, there were some kinds of torture scenes in there. Mm. And it was not fun. Mm. It was not cool. I'm not trying to see that. I'm not trying to show that to my audience. So, yeah, I don't know about Call of Duty Black Ops. I'll have to check it out myself and see if it's any good. But, yeah, the issue with games like this. Wait a minute. Was Call of Duty Black Ops the one with the girl where at the very beginning there was that uh, girl, you know, that looked like she was held, being held hostage by this warlord. Then you kill the warlord who was holding her as a human shield. Then she grabs a gun and you have to shoot her. Uh, if that's the one, I don't think so. I'm not doing that. Yeah, well, that was not my favorite. No, no, I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. But you know, pretty interesting game, but just so again violent and stuff and weird. So I don't know. And this is uh, what is this? SOCOM three. Ooh, SOCOM three. I haven't really done SOCOM three. I don't know much about SOCOM three, so I have to check it out. It's on PlayStation. Wait, original? No, nope, PlayStation two. Mm -mm. You know, I had to check that out sometime, but yeah, so come through. I do like some good uh, army games because you can you know run around and shoot things, you know, shoot enemies, and it's pretty cool. And it's like just you know, kind of justified because of course they're trying to get, shoot you, so you have to shoot them. So there you go. But you know, another violent when it's not a violent, it's great. And then of course another game that I need to work on and play way more, and I will let's take a new Xbox Gears of War Two. Of course I want Gears of War Three. I saw go that's the first time I ever saw a Ghost Robo. I heard of Ghost Robo was Gears of War Three. You know, and he was playing. I was looking for a game. I was looking for a walkthrough. A person who who didn't try not to cuss, and I found Ghost Robo. And he doesn't, you know. And that was very nice because then it was all I had to do was censor the games cussing. That was great when I recorded it. So that was awesome. We recorded it put my MP3 player. So that was awesome, and that led to seeing all kinds of cool Ghost Robo videos. So that was great. And but Gears of War two came before. Without Gears of War two, there you know Gears of War three. So yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Basically, it leads up to Gears of War three. So yeah, I'll definitely be playing Gears of War two again. Mm -hmm. You know, it is violent, yes, but it's against these weird monster guys, so it's not the same exactly. <laughs> so that's that's better. I'll try to censor as much as I can, but it's still it's mostly just shooting at enemies until they fall over. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I really did like this game. Definitely like uh sort of you know, maybe the same people made Halo, I think. Mm. Yep, Microsoft Game Studios, and I would love to see an epic crossover of with Master Chief and uh, Don. You know, who's this guy? I forgot his name. Uh, it's been a long time, but the I don't know, but he's cool. I, I like to see this more of this guy with you know fighting with, alongside maybe even alongside Master Chief or against Master Chief, whatever. It'd be so cool to see. It'd be so fun. But you know, he was really, he's really cool. I like him a lot, and it, it was it was a really interesting game. And of course, turning it down got out got rid of all the cuss words, so I could just read it myself. It was great. Yay! So I'll definitely be getting that again. I'll be playing that once I get a new Xbox 360. So that's something else. The unveiling from my, one of my brother's friends' groups from church. That's nice. Yeah, it's a pretty cool group. Mm. Little group of cool guys in there. Mm. Uh, shout out to JC. Mm. Now, Halo 3. I have actually two copies of Halo 3. One that didn't work, and one then that got broken, I think. Wait a minute. Mm. Yep, this is the good one. Okay. Halo 3. Halo 3 was awesome. Uh, I'm totally going to play Halo. I did play Halo 3. Yeah, I played Halo 3 without commentary without on um difficulty on um you know legendary difficulty when I first started which was a mistake because I was just getting familiar with the game and of course it was dragging on and on and on and on and on <laughs> you know but thankfully my former roommate he there was a tiny thing where he was like showing me where all these secrets were the skulls were and so he basically was like okay you know let's let's save that so the next time I come next time I you know we play you'll be right there so basically when we saved over my old save, so that was like it was not a legendary anymore. So I was like, you know what? I'll just play through the story. I played through the story, and that that was awesome. I'm glad I got to see that story. It was a great story, at least to me. And uh, basically, you know, it was a nice, cool thing to see you know, Master Chief hang out and shoot at you know shoot at the Covenant and whatnot. It was great. It was great. And uh, of course, look forward to playing Halo Four. You know, there's some weird, annoying issues with Halo Four, including uh, Master Chief getting force choked oh, like a little baby. <laughs> Why? Why have that? <laughs> 
<laughs> but other than that, it was pretty good, you know. But let's look forward, still looking forward to seeing it. So it's gonna be great to see. And you know, definitely was one of the coolest games ever on Xbox, if you ask me. Xbox 16. And we'll be back on the next episode. We'll talk about Blue Dragon. We'll see you next time.